and are poor, varied in color and race. Neighbors are near and are far away. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we should serve. These are the ones we should love. All these are neighbors to us and you. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Show how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Loving puts us on our knees, showing our faith by our deeds, serving the neighbors we have from you. Jesus, feet of our friends, silently washing their feet. This is the way we should live with you. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Good morning, everyone. Reverend Dwight Lee Walter here once again at the Congregational Church of Patchogue. Sitting over on the sidelines with my pen in hand, writing notes on my uh, sermon here as Craig was playing Yezu Yezu. Some of the things he said is to teach us how to serve. And it was talking about love and service. And one of the lines was, um, show our faith by our deeds. That reminds me that a day before yesterday, today is Sunday, um, the 21st, and the 19th, uh, we were, uh, at the request of uh, Governor Cuomo's office, we were asked if we would be a site for uh, COVID vaccination, and that the vaccination would be conducted by Stony Brook University Medical Center. And so we did. And although we haven't been open here to in-person services for a year, we had many persons in here. And the church was of service, showing our love, showing our faith by our deeds. And in that case, the deed was opening up this sanctuary not the gym, but the sanctuary was the place where people came to get inoculated against the virus of COVID. And of course, it seemed like they were also being inoculated against the virus of fear and hate and suspicion. It became a beautiful, beautiful sanctuary with people who had never been here. Some people came in and crossed themselves 
as they looked around and then sat down. It was a loving environment. Much good was done. And I thank the Congregational Church of Patchogue for allowing us, encouraging us to be of such service. Well, we are in the season of Lent, getting toward the end of it, is the season of introspection. It's a season of spiritual introspection, spiritual inventory, where we assess what is we like, what we don't like, what we've done well, what we could have done better. And we are going to be looking at that in a few moments. As the recap, instead of looking at theology or doctrine or historical uh, events as they took place one after another after another in a linear fashion through time, we decided this season to look at some of the symbols of Lent. The way I said before, a wedding ring or a flag or a baptismal font can be symbols of love that are much more meaningful than a little piece of metal pounded into a circle. It's a symbol of marriage and commitment and love. So the first symbol in the first week of Lent we had was the symbol of the towel and basin. And it symbolized how Jesus came, as he said, not to be served, but to be of service to others. On the second Sunday of Lent, we placed the symbol of the rooster on representing Peter. When Jesus said, Peter said, oh, I'm with you, I'm your man. And Jesus said, you will deny you even know me three times before the sun comes up in the morning and we hear the rooster crow. On the third Sunday of Lent, we talked about the symbol of the gavel, representing Jesus' trial before Pontius Pilate. And last week, the fourth Sunday of Lent, we used the symbol of the crown of thorns that was placed on Jesus' head as a sign of humiliation as he proceeded through the time of the Good Friday crucifixion. And so today, the fifth and final Sunday of Lent before Palm Sunday, which is next Sunday, we will add the symbol of the dice. And that will be interesting. We're not going to be talking about Atlantic City or Las Vegas. We'll be talking about the rolling of the dice and how that was a symbol that was so important, not only at the time of Jesus' trial and crucifixion, but also what we're rolling the dice within our lives to this very day. But first, today is the first anniversary of this church's closing to in-person worship services. It's been a year. Much good has come. We've talked about that through this entire year. But there has also been much loss, including our assumptions and our practices, and we've lost people. I would like us now to listen to Dr. Jerry Manneke in San Diego performing on his organ in his home in San Diego, Samuel Barber's Adagio for Strings. How do you play strings on the organ? Well, the Adagio was adapted for organ by William Strickland and will be performed by Dr. Manneke. This brilliant music has actually become a popular piece. I've heard it played in various places around the nation during the pandemic. Let us listen to this, relax, four minutes, a four minute requiem where you can just let your shoulders down, close your eyes if you wish, or keep your eyes open actually because it's a beautiful video. And just listen to this music, mindful of who has been lost, honorable to those who have been lost not only to their suffering and dying, but also for the fact that they were with us. This last week, we have lost someone in this church also due to COVID once again. In silent respect for ourselves and for others, let us quiet our minds, still our bodies, remember and celebrate the departed and those who still remain until God calls us all home and we meet again.
Thank you so very much, Jerry, Reverend Gerard Manneke, excuse me, Reverend, uh, that's me, Dr. Gerard Manneke from playing on his uh, organ, organ in his home in San Diego. That was beautiful. So, do you happen to remember exactly a year ago when we did our very first Facebook Live service? Do you remember that one? I didn't. I had to go find it. But you don't need to remember because we are now going to show you a very short snippet, one minute and 23 seconds actually, of the very first virtual service that we did in this church a year ago. I want you to remember when you watch that one minute and 23 second video that we only had five days to transform the entire way that we have been conducting services at the Congregational Church of Patchogue in the previous 228 years. Five days for two people to transform the way we do worship for the previous 228 years. If the video is a little choppy, and if it's a little hard to hear, even though Craig did his best to boost the volume, it's indicative of what was going on then. It was the best that we could possibly do with five minutes notice, five days notice. So here is one minute and 23 seconds of our very first virtual church service. Welcome. My name is uh, Reverend Dwight E. Walter, Congregational Church of Patchogue, as you probably know. And sorry that we're starting a couple minutes late, but you get over it, we'll get over it. We're here, and so are you. So uh, this is not our normal situation, obviously, but if it's the first time, first of all, good morning. Beautiful day outside. If you've been out, a little bit cold, a little warm up. So um, this is not our usual situation. Bear with us. We'll be getting this down over the next few weeks as we consider um, what we're going to be doing next and how the worship services are going to start, etc. So, are there any announcements you'd like to raise? Oh, wait a minute. We don't have an audience. I forgot all about that. So, here we are in Lent. Interesting season that we had black, uh, what do you call it? Friday the 13th. Two days later, we had Sunday was the Ides of March last Sunday. And then we had oh, the full moon a little while before that. And we're in the season of Lent, which is leading up. Then we Advent leads up to Christmas, away in the manger, sweetness, hope, all that. Now we're leading into Lent, which goes from the crucifixion into the resurrection. So it's really an interesting time to be going through the situation that we're going through in the country and in the world, I mean, right now. Sorry about that. Thank God it was only a minute and 23 seconds. Interesting thing about what you just saw. It ended with saying, interesting situation we are going through in the country and the world right now. I could hear sort of this manicness in a, my voice. Uh, we didn't have a clue what we were doing. And I didn't remember at all, but I was, uh, watched this and I went, oh yeah. When we closed due to COVID with five days notice, it had just been Friday the 13th, the Ides of March, beware the Ides of March. There had been a full moon, there was the COVID closure, and we were entering the season of Lent, of introspection leading up to the crucifixion. It was so spiritually charged, it was unbelievable. Interesting situation we're going through right now in this country and the world, isn't it? Is what I said a year ago. And it's still true. Did you notice that I wasn't wearing a mask? Neither was Craig, even when seen. Nobody was. We didn't know about masks. Nobody knew about masks. It wasn't even on the map that people should be wearing masks. We thought we would speculate and make a wild guess, giving us lots of wiggle room, because we could reopen sooner in case it seemed too extreme. But we projected and told everyone we might be closed for as long as 10 weeks. 
Egad, people couldn't believe it. Ten weeks? We're going to be closed for ten weeks? Ten weeks became ten months, and now it has been a year. People thought that we were being hysterical when we projected back then that as many as, hold your seats, as many as 50,000 people might die of COVID in one year. Yeah, right, 50,000 people. You're, why are you being so hysterical? You're fanning the flames of a non-story. You're making things worse. Don't be so dramatic. Blah, 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 blah. Denial, anger, resentment, fear, loss of control, feeling vulnerable and hating it. All of that stuff came up. It was unnamed, but we were living it. A few months ago in this church, we rang the bell in the bell tower we called it, to the, just for a little while, we, we renamed it the COVID bell. And we rang it 220,000, 220,000 times we rang that bell consecutively. One time for each person in America alone who had, as of then, lost their life to COVID. The bell rang every six seconds, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for over two weeks. In response to the church ringing the bell to remember the dead, and it was rung softly, some people in our own church turned on us, turned on me, because they thought that we were once again fanning the flames of a non-story. We're through this, even though we did it at a time when the COVID numbers were starting to spike again. I was threatened online, and it had to be reported to the police with strangulation for calling attention to and honoring the subject of COVID deaths in America. The sound of the bell and what it represented apparently interfered with people having brunch at an outdoor table on their closed main street. And they knew that that bell was for remembering the dead and it was interfering with the omelet and the Chardonnay as people were pretending that it was all over. That was months ago. So we rang it 220,000 times nonetheless. If we rang the COVID bell now, we would have to ring it 540,000 times, more than double in the last few months, if we rang it for each person in America alone who has died to this day. We would then need to ring it every six seconds, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, not for two weeks, but for over a month, we would have to ring the bell one time, each second, each six seconds, for 38 days, 24 hours a day. There is a grave danger in me. I'm telling myself, Dwight, you're being so negative. These people, you're turning them off. That's what they said when we rang the COVID bell. That's what they said when we said there might be 50,000 deaths. That's when they said when people were saying, reopen the church, reopen the church, reopen the church. And last week, four COVID people in one family, one of them is dead. The other is struggling, very much struggling in the hospital in the COVID unit. So we're not going to say, oh, it's over. The crucifixion isn't over. The story of Jesus isn't over. The good news isn't over either. Some of us have loved ones who have passed. May they rest in eternal peace. But many of our loved ones remain. We're still here, including me, battling cancer, through the entire pandemic. We will get through this. Not all is lost. The Christian faith tradition tells us this over and over and over again. Water out of rocks in the desert that will bring thirst to your children, will bring a, a quenching of thirst to your children. Walking on water, raising the dead, resurrection of the spirit, an ark, Noah's ark we preached about early on in the pandemic where we all felt huddled in our little ark. This church was an ark. Your home was an ark. 
And we will stay afloat even though it's through the darkness. And we'll wait for the dove to come back with an olive branch in its mouth, signifying that they have found dry land. We will see all of this. There is light at the beginning as well as at the end of this long tunnel of COVID that we are still living in. So here we are. This is Lent, the season of introspection. The long tunnel of Lent leads through the crucifixion to the resurrection. The symbol we contemplate this week is thus the dice. The dice represent how Jesus was suffering and dying on the cross as Roman soldiers at the foot of the cross cast lots, which would be like the drawing the short stick. You know, you have a bundle of this and some of the, the ends are in your hand. You don't know. The one who draws the short stick wins. The lots was the ancient equivalent of the dice to see they would roll the dice to see who gets Jesus' clothing once he dies. How tragic it was that the armed soldiers sat at the foot of the Son of God, thinking that all Jesus could offer them was access to his used clothing, when in fact, what Jesus had to offer them was salvation and eternal life a way out of what appeared to be no way out. A way of walking on water when people feared drowning. The way of everyone being fed when all you had was two fish and seven loaves or five loaves, whatever it was. Oh, those are ridiculous stories dismissed. They're ridiculous stories. They're ridiculously full of hope and faith and prosperity and abundance and begging us to believe in the law of abundance. We all believe in the law of lack. Get what you can before somebody else gets it. Let the nice guys come in last, because we're going to have to do what we got to do. OK, that's the law of the world. The law of the Christ is, in faith we shall be provided for, even if not according to our expectations. Instead of being clothed in a dirty robe, they could have been clothed in a blanket of love and forgiveness had they chosen to roll the dice for faith rather than for used clothing. Let us be reminded this season of Lent that we have access to much more than the roll of the dice and what they can provide for us. Let us never settle for less than what God has to offer. And instead of asking God to fulfill our expectations, maybe we should ask ourselves to fulfill the expectations of God. And while it's still possible, still possible, for a Christian to lose their shirt, to lose their job, to lose their health in this world, through Jesus the Christ, we need never, never lose our soul. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves you. Begs us to love each other. Let us now enjoy this closing segment of music.
Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. And so we have marked honored, celebrated, remembered, gone through the grief and the pain and the loss, but also the joy and the hope and the expectation that there is light at the beginning of the tunnel. We didn't go into total darkness when the pandemic began. Actually, we came alive in many respects. And we continued to with the inoculations, the vaccinations last week, and on and on and on. The soup kitchen is reopened outside. The food pantry to go basis. We're coming back to life. And we knew we would. But let us never forget what we have been through. Let us take that and make it a parcel of our heart. Just like we can't have a relative undie, it would be wrong to not honor their, their, their sacrifice, their loss. We do that all the time. The church remembers. We grieve and we celebrate lives. And we also pray. So let us join our hearts and our words and our minds and spirits together if we care to and pray the prayer that our faith tradition tells us that Jesus himself taught to the original disciples using whatever words with which you may be most familiar. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Indulge me for four seconds as I say, happy birthday, Maya. And now in our going, may the light and the love and the mercy and the compassion and the forgiveness of God, may the nudging and the prodding and the gentle pushing of God that leads us, encourages us, sometimes even drags us into the future, a beautiful future intended for us as we try our very best to live the life that God intended for us so that we can be restored not only to what we were, but restored to what we can be and will be together. And may this light of God shine down upon you and out from within you and grant you peace. Be well. Amen.